So I've got the foundation finished, all of the cinder block. Now it's time to do the backfill so that when I start on the carpentry, I can walk around the foundation without tripping all over myself and all over the rough ground because I'll smooth it out nice and get the grading finished. Here we go. Yeah. Wow. Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple, Live Free, and it's time to do the grading, do the backfill, get everything smooth so that I can walk around here without tripping on stuff. Couple things I can tell you about the uh, the grading. Well, first of all, when I lived in Pennsylvania, in, nor in the northern mountains of Pennsylvania, where I have most of my construction experience, the required depth of the footer was actually four feet because of the depth of the frost that we had there in the winter. Down here in, in southern Virginia, the required depth is only two feet, which quite frankly to me seems kind of cute <laughs> but I enjoy it because that means it's a lot less work for me I don't have to dig down as far I don't have to put as many courses a block so two feet I've got eight inches of footer and then two courses a block at eight inches each it's 24 inches which is two feet so I had to bring the dirt level up to this point that gives me two feet below there below the left surface of the ground for the frost footer which means I will only have one block of uh, course showing above the, the level of the dirt also if I was building a full foundation 8 foot wall 11 or 12 courses a block I wouldn't be able to uh, do any backfill yet because if the wall is that high and you fill it with dirt behind here, the weight of the dirt can actually make the uh, wall bow in. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> we had a, an excavator that we hired because we were doing several jobs at once and we, didn't, we only had one machine so we hired somebody else to do it. He was relatively new and he didn't understand that and he, we, it was a great big long house with an eight foot uh, you know, cinder block wall. He came in and backfilled it too early and he was backfilling it with his bulldozer. He filled it in and he ran his bulldozer right out here to smooth everything out and the entire wall, I think it was about 50 or 60 feet long, the entire wall bowed in in the center at least a foot. What a nightmare. We had to actually take everything down and redo it. it cost us tens of thousands of dollars. <clears throat> so in that case you can't fill backfill until you get the floor system built. You get all the joists in and the flooring on and then that will brace the wall so it won't get pushed in when you fill it. But because this is only this tall, there's not going to be enough dirt there to make a difference. So I'll be able to backfill it without any issues. You see that over here on the existing house, there's only one course of block showing. So the new addition will be the same with just the one course showing all the way around. Before I do any backfill, I'm going to waterproof the foundation. I have foundation coating. It's a rubberized tar with fiberglass reinforcement in it. And I'll paint that on there. And then I have a heavy duty 6 mil plastic that I'll stick to that while the tar is still wet. And that will glue it on there and that will help to waterproof the foundation. Of course I have that drain tile underneath of here if you watched earlier videos so water would hit the tar and plastic and run down into the drain and then run around and out. That will keep the inside dry. It really works. It's a system that works quite well. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as I've been doing the backfill, we've actually had a change of plans. But since you didn't know what our plans were before... <laughs> Won't be a change to you. Yeah. <laughs> what we were planning to do, there's going to be a door going this way on the, on the back side of the addition. We were going to build, we were debating on whether to build a, a deck there or a patio down low where you'd come down several steps and then there'd be a patio there. We like the idea of doing something back here because especially once it gets kind of shady, it's really pleasant back yeah. here. So, you know, a deck, it's, a patio, something. It's very private back here and the sun and the big overhang uh, as the sun moves that way, it puts the patio in this area in shade starting about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So from then on, it's very pleasant and, and peaceful and quiet and private back here. Yeah, it's nice. Yep. So, but then I realized that because of the frost footer, I've got to bring the dirt up to where there's only one uh, cinder block left there. And so the dirt would slope down and it'd be hard to make a patio. So, what have we decided to do? Well, we, um, he let me pick out what color I wanted, and we're gonna be actually um, building a retaining wall that's gonna start right, you know, when the, when the room, um, like you see the wood, wood shed over there? Yeah, the <laughs> wood shed over there. We're going to um, start a wall, a retaining wall right there, and then bring it out and curve it kind of out into the yard um, so that we can put the level of the, um, yeah, he'll show you here. <laughs> right here. Yep. So that we can make the level of the dirt proper so that it covers all the frost footer, but it's going to be um, level enough that we can make kind of a patio out of it. Yep. And then that can come out, you know, can come from the side and come out a little bit in the back here. Um, and I just think it'd be really, really nice. And um, when we get all the siding eventually ever finished on the house, that's an, another project, um, but it's going to be gray with white trim just like our shed is. And um, so I went with a kind of a real deep red, um, you know, uh, retaining wall, which eventually we can put down um, flagstones, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. That'll match. And I just thought that that deep red would look really, really nice with the... Um, to contrast that light gray and the white and everything. So I'm excited, yep. you know. So anyway, that's that's what we're gonna be doing to try to finish the, the basic uh, back backfill for the foundation and basic landscaping so that it's gonna be set up, you know, appropriately. And we're not gonna just have a big old slope right beside the new uh, right. room that we can't use, you know. So it turns out, it turns out to be more work and more expense and Elizabeth always likes to say about a project that everything costs more and takes longer than you expect. It just seems to be the truth through the years. But we're pretty excited about having a nice good sized patio out here. It'll be a wrap around. It'll start over there and it'll come all the way around around this way where the flat is. Yeah. So we'll be able to have, you know, a barbecue grill there and a picnic table and some uh, recliner lawn chairs and different things like that. Yeah. So we're we're kind of excited about that. That wasn't the way it was planned, that's just the way it, it's kind of developing as we build it. Also, I appreciate the fact that because we have to really bring the dirt up like we do have to do, um, it's going to be just like a real easy step out onto the patio. It's, it's going to be... Yeah, it'll just be one step down. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, that is nice. I, it just seems very accessible and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of excited. It's going to make it a little bit more extensive project. But we have to do it for the backfill anyway. Yeah. So now I don't have quite enough dirt there. I'm going to have to get another load or two of dirt in here. But dirt's not that expensive. It's like I don't know, two hundred and fifty dollars a load or something like that. So yeah, and that's a lot of dirt. Yeah, that's, a big that's load. for a great big truckload. Yeah. So. so I think it's going to be nice when we get it all done. And just the way that the job kind of had to work out, so that we would be properly covering those frost footers. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yep. <laughs> So you can see here, after this backfill, there's only one block showing. So the dirt will continue where the tar is, and then it will continue out at the same level all the way to just to the right of that spigot. So it'll be a patio completely level there. 
and then a retaining wall will come out this way and around here so that we'll have eventually all of that level around and all of that all the way back into there will all be level patio with flagstones on it. So we're pretty excited about this development. Like I said, originally we were just going to put some kind of a little deck right here or something, but this is going to be much nicer. So I just mentioned that I'm going to have to get probably a couple of loads of dirt to have enough to finish the patio. And then I realized that I've still got this dirt inside of the foundation that I was just going to leave there. So I'm digging that out now to give us more dirt for the patio to reduce the amount of dirt I have to buy. That also is going to give me more room in the crawl space when I have to go down there to do some work by removing that dirt. So it's a win-win. Now in the last video that we did, which was the one where I built all the cinder block walls, I got a lot of questions, a lot of questions about what about access to the crawl space? You know, I didn't mention it and I didn't even think to address it. I did not build in a door for access to the crawl space. And here's why. It would have had to have been at least two blocks deep where I would have had to leave a, a, the blocks out. Two blocks would be difficult to crawl through. Three blocks would be better, which means that it would go all the way down to the foundation. Which would mean two things. One is that then on the outside, I would have to have the dirt down at that level, and that would not give us the patio that we want out there. But the other thing, the main thing, is that if I had done that and left the cinder block lower, then I would have had to dig a frost footer deeper because I have to have two feet of dirt. So wherever the bottom of the door would be, I would have to go two feet below that. So that whole uh, section of that wall on the back side would have had to go two feet deeper than what I did. And there's bedrock down there. I would have had to get a jackhammer to get all of that out of there. And so, what am I doing? I left this without an access door on the side. It gives it a nice clean, uh, look on the outside gives us lots of room for that patio and what I'm going to do is build a trap door in the floor to get down in there you know I'll go down in there to get all the plumbing done but there isn't much plumbing in here just a half bath and once all of that's done I won't have any reason to go down there except for emergency plumbing repairs which doesn't happen very often so against this wall all the way down we're going to have shelves built where we can keep all of the the jars after Elizabeth does canning from her garden. And so I will put the access uh, door in the floor up against that wall underneath of the, uh, the shelving so that if we need to get down there, we just move the bottom row of shelving, which will be very easy to take out. And then we'll have access to go down there for emergency repairs. And that's it. So I think it's gonna work well. Barry and I talked about what to do, and he's the one that came up with that idea. He's done that once before, and he's worked on several other houses that had it that way, and it works. So there's your answer, an access door, trap door in the floor. So for a while I was thinking about just building the addition and worrying about the, the patio later. It's, I don't have to do the patio to build the addition, but then I realized once the addition is done, it'll be much more difficult to get the machine in there and do all the work without worrying about hitting the addition with the machine and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to go ahead and do the patio right now before I start the, the, the construction, the carpentry. I really hate to lose a few days. Uh, I want to get it on the carpentry, but it's going to be a lot easier to do the patio now. Oh yeah, before we have everything kind of built and you have to be so careful, yeah. now you just get in there and just get all the grounds work done with the machine. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I guess that'll be the next video. Yeah, to start talking so, about what we're doing with that. So if yep, you want to see if you want to see the patio build, that'll be in the next video. <laughs> so. Cool. Thanks for watching everybody. Live simple. Live free. You be blessed. All right, we love you. We'll see you very soon with more. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>